さあ Okay, I don't really like Starbucks like that. I probably eat it like. Story happened a few years ago. I would often go to Starbucks to get work done on my laptop. Oh, okay. It was my favorite place to work because I liked their coffee, and I didn't have the distractions I would have at home, so I could get a lot more work done. One day in the winter, I was working like I often did. It was nighttime, probably about 7 30 or so. The Starbucks I like to go to closed at 8 30. So it was pretty calm, and not really anybody else was there other than me at the time. I sat in my favorite spot, which was in the back corner of the table with this one soft chair that they had. Sus! I had to go to the bathroom, so I got up and walked over to it, which was only about 10 feet away from where I sat. I was in the bathroom for maybe a minute or two, and then came back out and returned to my laptop. I went back to work and. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, nah, that's. You just gonna leave your laptop unattended in public like that? I understand there's not that many people around, if not anybody around. But it's still, that's, that's your place of, that's where you do business at. I'm not about to just leave that shit around. Come on. What the, what? No. No, 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 no. You, nah. I realized something. There was a portable USB stick that was in my computer. I knew it wasn't mine, and it hadn't been there before. Oh, shit. I took it out and looked around the coffee shop. There was nobody else in there besides me. I got up and walked around, and then went to the counter and brought the USB with me. I asked someone working there if they had seen anyone go to my computer and handed them the USB drive. I was told they hadn't seen anyone, they but they took the USB to hold on to. They ain't cahoots. I looked from the counter and could see that the area I had been sitting in was obscured from the vision of whoever was working it. I went back and got my laptop and then left. I was hoping that whatever that was was a joke and they didn't mess up my computer in any way. When I got home, I looked on my computer again and noticed that there was a new folder on the bottom left side of my screen. Just throw the folder in the trash. Don't go, sn it's already bad enough, you know, that you noticed it. But don't, don't please, for the love of Jesus, do not to go snooping in a mother car. Please don't be curious. Don't do anything. Just throw it away. It was titled with just a bunch of numbers, and I clicked on it to see a text document. When I opened it up, a message read, Hello, I know everything about you, oh, where no. you live, who you are, and what you're doing. It really creeped me out and I closed and deleted the file. Could this be true? Did the USB stick on my computer somehow reveal all of my information? I was terrified. As I was on my computer, suddenly something popped up on my screen. It was a video of myself on my webcam in a window. I tried to close the window, but I couldn't. No matter how many times I clicked or what I did, it just stayed there on my screen. It was the creepiest thing ever, so I slammed my laptop shut. I didn't use it again for a long time after that and ended up taking it to a professional to have it cleared and reset. Looking back at that experience, I don't know exactly what happened, but I'm afraid whoever did that to me knew where I lived. Yeah, they was also trying to get one off too. Jesus, they nasty. You're gross, you're gross. I used to go to Starbucks all the time. I would say at least two or three times a week, I would stop at Starbucks for coffee on my way to work. Right. I would order online every time as I left my house and then pick it up on my way. I got it so often that some of the employees started to recognize me. Oh. I would be friendly with a few of them. All right. Okay. Sadly though, the lines at the location I usually went to were always super long. And one day I realized another Starbucks that was also on my way to work. I made the choice to switch locations to see if it would be faster. And it was, in fact, quite a bit faster every single day, and it saved me some time. After I would say about a couple of weeks of going to the new location, one day I forgot to place my order online. It wasn't a big deal, but I would just have to order at the drive thru at the Starbucks. When I got there, the voice on the other end of the speaker of the drive thru said hi to me and called me by my name. This surprised me because I had only been to that location three or four times at that point, and it wasn't a daily basis or anything. Nah. 
No, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Just keep my government name out your mouth. Please. Please. We was, we was doing good. So, we was doing good for so long. Until you said my legal name. Uh, don't, please. Cluck and relax. I, dead ass, that's what I would have said. I would have just been like, they would have, I would have drove up. They would have said my name. Hey, Marcus. All right, relax. 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 Don't you ever in your life say my legal government name again, please. Do I make myself clear? I also didn't recognize the voice as it was a man's voice. Ugly. And all the people I knew from the previous location were females. Oh no. I pulled up to the next window after I ordered, and a man with a headset came to the window. I paid, and he handed me my coffee and smiled. He once again said my name and told me to have a nice day. Then he winked at me. The man was rather tall and had sort of long, dark hair with a slight beard. I have to say I had never seen him before. But beyond that, I really didn't think anything of it. It wasn't until every single time that I would go to Starbucks after He said your name twice. He don't think nothing of it. Get the cluck out of here. He would be working and would always be the one to hand me my order. Wow. Each time he would wink at me or have an almost creepy grin on his face. Oh my god. None of this really bothered me though, but it did feel a little bit strange. Oh yeah? Then I stopped seeing the man. There were different people every time when I got my coffee in the morning, and I didn't really notice the fact that I wasn't seeing this strange guy anymore. One of the times I went inside to pick up my coffee and was walking back to my car when suddenly I saw the man again. He was in the parking lot and he approached me as I was getting into my car. I didn't really recognize him at first. It took me a few seconds. He said hi to me and smiled and asked me how I was doing. I said fine in a confused tone and asked what he wanted. He then asked me how the movie I watched last night was. Then he winked at me like the past times and walked away. I stood there next to my car in shock. I had, in fact, been watching a movie the previous night, but I had no idea how he knew about it. I was really creeped out, and for me, this was the last straw with the man from being slightly weird to completely creepy. I had no idea who this guy was other than the fact that he worked at the Starbucks and was creepy. I decided to go back inside the Starbucks and ask another employee who he was. I first looked around the parking lot, but the man was gone. I then walked inside the Starbucks, which was relatively busy, but nothing too crazy. I went to the counter and asked who the man was with longer brown hair, a slight beard, and pretty tall. I was told in response that it sounded a lot like a guy named Jonathan, who had worked there, but had been fired for inappropriate behavior around the workplace. They said he had worked at another location close by, but had moved to that location shortly before getting fired. I briefly told my story. I was told by several people that they thought he seemed creepy and that apparently followed one of his co-workers home one night. Ah, damn. It gave me the chills as I realized this Jonathan guy most likely was outside of my house the previous night and saw me watching a movie. So many thoughts started to race through my head, such as how did he know where I lived and had he followed me home or been to my house before? I had to go to work at that point, so I left. But throughout the day, I texted with several of my friends about what had happened. Later that day, I got home from work and asked my friend Lisa to come over and keep me company. Lisa! I got home and shortly after heard the sound of Lisa pulling up. Lisa! I was so relieved because I really didn't want to be alone in my house that night after what had happened. Lisa and Coos. But then I received a text from Lisa saying that she would be there in about 15 minutes. My ass! I went over to look out the window and noticed a different car driving slowly down the street outside my window. I lived in a quiet neighborhood and there wasn't a whole lot of cars that went down the street, so I sort of noticed when they did. It was a black car and the windows were tinted. It parked across the street, but slightly past my house. Of course, I was paranoid and worried that it was the Jonathan guy. I watched the car from my window, hoping to see somebody, anybody get out of the car that wasn't Jonathan from Starbucks, but nobody was getting out. Then my phone started to vibrate and ring in my left hand as I held the living room curtain open with my right. It just about gave me a heart attack and I closed the curtain and looked at who was calling me. It was a number that I didn't recognize. I decided to answer it. The voice on the other end was the familiar voice of Jonathan. I heard him ask me why I was watching him and told me to come outside. I freaked out at this and screamed as loud as I could that I was calling the police. He Shut then hung up. up on me and I opened the curtain slightly to see his car pulling away. 
I then called the police and they said they would be on their way. They arrived a short time later along with Lisa. I gave them as much information as I could on Jonathan and I stayed at Lisa's house the next few nights. Finally, I was told that Jonathan had been found and I would no longer have to worry about him anymore. You sure? He had worked at the first Starbucks I had been to almost every day and apparently asked to transfer when he realized I had gone to another one. Wow. I just wonder how long he knew where I lived or how many times he had been to my house without me noticing. I mean, they got, they got him, but like, who's to say, you know, he, he has other accomplices. I say that right? Last year, I went to Starbucks for some coffee. I don't get Starbucks all that often, but I do from time to time. On this particular day, I was pretty sleepy, but had to drive about an hour home. So I went for some coffee. It wasn't all that busy there, but there were a few other cars in the drive through ahead of me. I pulled in and waited. Eventually it was my turn and I ordered. When I got to the window to pay, I was told that my order had been paid for by the person in front of me. I wasn't asked if I wanted to keep it going and pay for the next person, but was just handed my coffee. I was pretty happy about it until I drove away and noticed that within the little cardboard thing that goes around the cup, there was a piece of paper rolled up into a note. Obviously I was driving, so I didn't bother reading the note. But once I got home almost an hour later, I read it. It was a small piece of paper, which gave details about me and my family, such as names, addresses, and phone numbers. What the fuck? I was told that I needed to come up with $10,000 or something very bad would happen. I couldn't believe what I was reading or how this happened. I had never been to that Starbucks location before and didn't even remember what car had been in front of me to pay for my drink or anything like that. But I was terrified, so I went straight to the police. When I did, I was told they would investigate and they told me a short time later that they didn't believe I had anything to really worry about. Still, I did worry about it, and I never did consider giving whoever it was the money. I didn't even know how to contact them. It's been a while since that happened now, and I guess maybe it was a joke or something, but I still don't know how to explain any of that. Who and jokes like that? got my information, or why they chose me in the drive through that day. Yeah, Starbucks is, I ain't noticed, but Starbucks is starting to become, like, after this, Starbucks is be starting to become more of a club place. I don't really eat Starbucks or drink Starbucks like that. Um, it's, I don't see what the hype is. I mean, it's good, you know, but, like, it's not good enough for, like, me personally. It's not good enough for me to, you know, go there on a consistent basis. You know, I'm not going to treat it as, like, a religion or some shit. But it's, I mean, it's all right. I'm not about to kill nobody over it, though. Now, if Adidas came out with some drinks, you got it. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy, my family.